filling across the start finish line and what are we going to do um, with the money that we won? All right. We able to trust you when you were out on the track. Well, the first step to that was uh, Jeff Gordon taking the risk and saying, hey, you want to work with me during the duels? And uh, at first I thought he was kind of just being top of the line, like, hey, I'll win. Chicago went for a long period of time. Deal with Gatorade for a long period of time. So uh, welcome at, at, the new, at the hell now of the Chicago Way Speedway as president. Thanks, Yurko. It's great to be here. And uh, like, like you said, I'm a 15-year resident of the city, living in the south suburbs. and spent the last 12 years of my career at Gatorade running their sports marketing department, but when I got approached about this opportunity to join the Speedway, I jumped at it. We've got a tremendous team out there, and I've just been a long-time believer in this sport, having uh, done a lot of business with the sport through Gatorade over the years, and just very excited about it. get into that, too, by the way, what your schedule is, you know, the rest of the way out, what you plan on doing, and kind of the relationship you have with a bunch of different race teams. We've been tremendously fortunate to have Trevor Bain, the Daytona 500 winner, visit us here in Chicago, and I think that's a message about NASCAR's commitment to this community and this marketplace. And they had Trevor stop by uh, following the victory, and we, we've had a whole series of events lined up for him today. We had a fan event over at Harry Carey's on Navy Pier. Here at Morton's, he's going to be joining the ESPN team of Waddle and Sylvie and uh, done a lot of media outreach. So we're, uh, we're, we're making good use of Trevor's time. Carl Edwards called me that night and asked, you know, we were talking about what could he have done different to beat us. And we, neither one of us know what could have happened differently, but a lot of things could have happened there. David Reagan came to Victory Lane, which, you know, I felt kind of sorry for him with what happened with the black flag. Um, and then, you know, Kurt Busch came to Victory Lane. Jeff Gordon, that's insane because that's my childhood hero. Um, uh, Kyle Busch came to Victory Lane. Um, I mean, there was so many people that have been supporting us. Uh, the White House called my phone earlier, you know. Um, it's just so much support from so many people. I, I don't know how to accept it all, you know. I don't know how to say thank you, but in so many ways, you know. But I just I really appreciate everybody's support. I used the washing machine at the motorhome that night to wash the clothes that I had. You know, I'd been in Daytona for 12 days already, so this is uh, it's going to be close to a month streak that I'm going to be on the road, which is the longest I've ever gone, um, and it's... It, it's tiring, you know it is, but I've enjoyed every step of it, and uh, I might have to go clothes shopping here soon to get some more because we're running low. I just didn't know what to expect. You know, now that I've been at it for a day or so, I kind of know what's going on, know how to kind of absorb it, how to uh, take it, and uh, how to still be excited through it. At first, I was really nervous about everything and didn't know what to expect, so now I'm getting more and more used to it already, but um, it's a lot. You know, it's a lot more than I ever realized that a Daytona 500 winner, you know, would receive. And uh, that just shows how big of a deal it is. You know, at first I was like, well, that's cool. We want to race, but it's the Daytona 500. It's something that people would give a lot up for to win. And uh, a lot of drivers have been at this for a long time. A lot of crew chiefs, my crew chief, Donnie Wingo, this is his 31st year, and this is his first 500 win. So to get this win for those people, the, the Wood Brothers, 35 years later after their last Daytona, uh, Daytona win, it's just, um, it's really neat to see it come together like this. There you go. That's some race fans. I know, right? Like you're excited, aren't you? You're champion, Yeah! 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 Yeah, 
Good guys, one, two, three, good. good. Hey. That's good stuff. Hey. Nice work. Well, it is uh, my honor and privilege to introduce uh, Trevor Bain, the 2011 winner of the Daytona 500. How about a big round of applause for Trevor Bain? How's everybody? We good? Good. Thank you, John. And uh, Trevor, welcome to your new life. I know. This is, um, I never expected all this, you know. Come baby! To commemorate the occasion, we've got a couple of gifts that we'd like to send you off with. The, uh, the first, obviously, in case you do prepare, decide to uh, take that ice cream scooping job, you got the golden scoop. So we have a bottle here, and someone pointed out to me that there's a little problem <laughs> that, um, that you only turn 20 on Saturday. So, <laughs> so for every problem, there is a solution. Okay. So and what does every 20-year-old need? A fake ID. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> so, wow. That's funny. I know you're headed to L.A. tomorrow. You may, <laughs> may have occasion to use that. But just, just I wonder so, if they'll believe it. What do you think? Well, I don't know. It may be slightly <laughs> oversized. You will be making right turns when you get to your I didn't know I was going to get picked on the whole oh, time yeah, here. No, you that's, know? Uh, <laughs> that's funny. We haven't even started. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I got, now I can decorate my house. I got so that one, on had, the wall. That's something you put up in the shop the week before you come out to Sonoma just to get you ready. That's funny. That's really cool, man. Thank you. And uh, just to keep the picking on going, we have one more thing. <laughs> oh, there's more. We understood they had a little problem on Sunday when the race was over. And in case you come out and win in Sonoma, <laughs> we've got... What happens is you cross the finish line and you get the checkered flag. Then you come up here, turn three, four, and you do your burnout. Okay. You get to turn seven, you wave to the fans. You get to turn eight, you pull the checkered flag out and you wave it in front of the fans. Then down into the pits, around here, and into winter season. So we want you to take the map home, study it, and be ready to go. I can't believe it. That was my first police escort ever on the way here. So <laughs> they did good. We got here safe. So, um, you know, that was <laughs> that was the first uh, strike in my brain. Like, what is going on? You know, this is crazy. And then we show up, and uh, that was my first time on a little red carpet deal out there. And, and uh, you know, I just feel bad because I can't sign every autograph. They tell me I have to keep moving, and I'd sit here all night if I could. So, um, you know, that's the worst part of this is not being able to sit out here and hang out with you guys all the time. But um, I, I, I really can't take it all in, and I don't know if I ever will be able to. This has been amazing. I mean, I've had so many incredible people help me along the way, and you just got to remember that because it's easy to sit out here and see all these cameras and everything and think, I did this, but, but really there's been a lot of help, and, uh, you know, God's just, he's, he's really supported me with, with awesome people, so um, that's why we get here. Is this your first Daytona 500 you've ever raced? It is, yes, sir. It's, uh, that was our first one, so uh, I felt kind of bad. You know, at first when I started doing my interviews, I didn't want to talk about it too much because I was scared Mark Martin and those guys would be mad at me. But, um, you know, it, it was our first one, so thank you, buddy. Um, and Finney, and I can't wait to get there. I thought turn 11 looks awesome. I just, uh, how everybody just locks up the brakes and they come piling into that last corner there. Uh, I'm just really excited to finally get some laps on that track whenever it happens. And then, you know, I like the elevation changes too there in one and two. I, I thought those are really neat. Um, a lot of times you go to a track and it doesn't have a lot of character, but I think Infineon is one of those tracks that uh, is really unique for the drivers to go to.